In the 1970s, the world was caught up in moral panic over the perceived rampant spread of pornography. In response, NBC executive Paul Klein coined the phrase jiggle television to describe the way many female television stars featured on his rival network, ABC's shows, were directed to move around suggestively wearing loose clothing or in their underwear so that their breasts or buttocks could be seen shaking or jiggling. This marketing strategy Klein was criticizing was the brainchild of ABC television producer and executive Fred Silverman, best known for his work on shows like Charlie's Angels, All in the Family, The Waltons, and Scooby-Doo Where Are You? The crude yet effective term Jiggle TV was often used in the media to describe shows like Wonder Woman, Three's Company, and perhaps most famously Charlie's Angels. These programs were meant to appeal to young male viewers. They often featured plots that were blatantly sexist, full of innuendo and suggestive dialogue, and entirely unrealistic in nature. It became evident exploiting female sexuality was the network's primary aim. Around this time, ABC's target audience was viewers between 18 to 35. Another apt name that Jiggle TV received was TNA TV. Jiggle TV was taken to new extremes in the late 80s as well as into the early 2000s with shows such as She Spies, Baywatch, and countless offerings from the USA Network. So join us as Factsverse presents Jiggle Television Shows Where Actresses Did Not Wear Bras. Charlie's Angels Farrah Fawcett Majors once said of Charlie's Angels that when the show was number three in the ratings, she figured that it was because of the cast's acting. When it reached number one, she decided that it could only be because she and her co-stars didn't wear bras. While Silverstone is often associated with the rise of Jiggle TV, it could also be argued that Aaron Spelling was the mastermind behind the genre. Of all the shows he helped create, none came under more fire than Charlie's Angels. But if you actually take the time to go back and watch a few older episodes, you'll discover it wasn't nearly as bad as the media made it out to be. From the way critics attacked it, you'd think the show was something akin to hardcore porn. But in actuality, the series wasn't nearly as gratuitous as the public was made to believe. Sure, Spelling exploited the Angels' assets, but compared to what we're used to seeing on modern-day network and streaming shows, it was quite tame in comparison. Every now and then, the program would find an excuse to show off the Angels wearing skimpy little outfits or bikinis, but most of the time, they were seen wearing the long dresses and pants that were in style in the late 70s. Even though they could often be seen wearing items like turtlenecks and polyester pants, the set of Charlie's Angels was a bra-free zone. Because of this, Charlie's Angels easily easily earns its place in the list of top Jiggle TV shows of all time. Three's Company This sitcom is yet another excellent example of how the Jiggle TV label was often over-exaggerated by the media. Of all the series on the air at the time, no other show came under as much fire from the scathing, bloodthirsty critics. That being said, as many critics would freely admit, it really wasn't all that sexy. Sure, the ladies were attractive, but Three's Company really didn't deserve to be labeled in such a derogatory way. It could be argued that shows like Gilligan's Island and the Beverly Hillbillies flaunted their female stars just as much. The real reason why Three's Company received the Jiggle TV label had to do with its marketing. ABC's promos made the show out to be some kind of softcore sex fest. In reality, the show rarely ever featured anything overtly offensive. It's true, Suzanne Somers had a few moments when her chest was the focal point of the camera, but these scenes weren't that common. So while Three's Company will forever be linked to the phrase Jiggle TV, there are many other shows that are more deserving of the branding. We're excited to have Tiege Hanley as the sponsor of today's video. They've helped me start and maintain my skincare routine by making the entire process uncomplicated. Honestly, it's the best skincare system for any guy who wants healthier skin. I recommend you start with their level one system, which comes with all the basics, including a daily face wash to get rid of the dirt and grime on your skin, a two times per week exfoliating scrub to get rid of dead skin cells, an AM moisturizer with SPF 20, because you should always be protecting your skin from the sun, and a PM moisturizer to help your skin stay hydrated and healthy throughout the night. My favorite part about Tiege Hanley is that every box comes with an instruction card that tells you when to use each product, how much to use, and in what order. Their products have made my skin look and feel better than ever, but you don't just have to take my word for it. They have over 5,000 five-star reviews on their website from satisfied customers around the world. In addition to amazing skin, members of Tiege Hanley get tons of benefits. 
including at least 20% off the retail price, the ability to customize your box, exclusive monthly deals, pause or cancel at any time, and free U.S. shipping or low-cost shipping to most other countries. And because Tiege Hanley is sponsoring today's video, they're offering my viewers a great deal. Just click the first link in the description and you'll get 30% off your first box, plus a free gift. Don't miss out on this amazing deal. Click that link and get started today. Don't forget to check out Tiege Hanley by clicking the link in the description of the video. Logan's Run Heather Menzies' Barely There miniskirt on Logan's Run was one of the most notable examples of a revealing wardrobe item being prominently featured on TV. That skirt was about as short as they come. Frequently, it took center stage, and in just about every episode, it could be seen flying upwards, giving the viewer an eyeful of what Menzies was working with. Not surprisingly, it was a much-discussed topic at the time. Even though the Jiggle TV phenomenon was at its peak, it still managed to create a stir. In 1977, Menzies told a newspaper that the production team had to be very careful because whenever she bent over in her costume, they were in trouble. As the series progressed, her skirt kept getting shorter and shorter. But it wasn't just the short skirt that caused controversy. The show often had Menzies jumping around, rolling in the sand, getting soaking wet, and having her dress torn to shreds. It clearly embraced its Jiggle TV branding. If you go back to watch an episode or two of Logan's Run, you'll be blown away by just how often, and how shamelessly, the camera got an upskirt glimpse of Menzies' undies. It's not like these shots were accidental, either. Clearly, the only reason they existed was to give male audiences something to drool over. Wonder Woman Wonder Woman made no attempt to hold back when dialing up the sex appeal. The producers of that show took every opportunity they could to sell the sizzle with an extra heaping portion of jiggle. Diana, played by Linda Carter, was a hit with male audiences. When she donned that iconic costume and became the titular Wonder Woman, she was essentially an unstoppable force. Not only did the baddies not stand a chance, but young viewers just entering puberty also seemed to meet their match. In one particularly notable episode, the Bermuda Triangle Triangle Crisis, Diana and Steve crash land on a desert island. Somehow during that crash sequence, Diana's relatively modest attire got shredded into something that more so resembled Daisy Dukes. In another episode, The Pied Piper, Wonder Woman is depicted in bondage. This wasn't the first nor the last time she would be put into such a compromising position. To make the most out of Wonder Woman's sizzling getup, cameras were frequently placed at revealing angles just around every turn. The show's producers milked Carter's sex appeal and her smoke hot outfit for everything it was worth. Battle of the Network Stars Even if sports aren't really your cup of tea, Battle of the Network Stars was an entirely different kind of beast. Not only did audiences get the chance to see some of their favorite TV stars duking it out in Olympic-inspired games that put their skills to the test, but the program was also a prime example of the Jiggle TV phenomenon in full force. The main reason why people tuned in every week was to see hot girls in tight clothing bouncing around their TV screens. This wasn't an unintended byproduct either. There's no way the show's producers weren't fully aware of what they were creating when they pitched the show's concept to the network brass at ABC. The Love Boat While there were countless shows from the 70s and 80s, such as The Dukes of Hazard, Bosom Buddies, and Vegas, that can justifiably receive the Jiggle TV label, The Love Boat is one that we believe stands atop all the rest. The show is famous for featuring actors and actresses who were past their prime, but even so, they made sure that in just about every episode, at least one or two hot actresses could be seen parading around in bikinis, lingerie, or skimpy skirts. The content was packaged as being family-friendly and light hearted, but audiences were constantly being directed to a bombardment of boobs and butts. It's almost like the show was more of a vehicle for showcasing TNA than telling any kind of meaningful story. The plot took the back seat while front and center was nothing but jiggly eye candy. While younger viewers probably weren't complaining, it's a wonder the show managed to air for as long as it did, because beyond the skin, the scripts were pretty lackluster. The Jiggle TV controversy pretty much died out by the early 1980s, but really the concept hasn't gone anywhere. As progressive as Hollywood likes to depict itself, it's obvious they haven't forgotten just how effective dialing up the sex appeal can be when promoting a new TV show or film. The times are a-changing, but sex still sells. Now it's time to hear from you. Which classic TV show do you think was the most blatantly exploitative in terms of how it depicted its female stars? Let us know in the comments section below.